fight so bad. That adrenaline pumping here in overtime. Gentlemen, we'll roll in regulation. Shake hands. This is overtime, men. We will have down and distance from the 25-yard line. The winner of the toss may elect to go on offense, defense, or choose an end of the field. Texas A&M, that's heads, tails, tails, heads. What is your decision? Heads. Heads is the call. It's, it's heads. He won the toss. Defense. You'd like to go on defense? Which end of the field? Right down here. Okay. Kansas State gets the football first. AM wins the toss. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return for overtime after this word from our ABC stations. ESPN College Football on ABC presented by K Jewelers headed to overtime between Texas AM and Kansas State. It took this drive and some costly Aggie penalties to get here. Pass interference. Face mask situation, Kansas State down 10 in this fourth quarter. Yet again, a double-digit lead that Texas A&M cannot hold on to. Twice today, Kansas State has come back from double-digit lead. Down 14, nothing in the first. Came back to tie it at 14. Down 10 in the fourth, even it at 31. Colin Klein to pass on the first play of overtime. Harker, did he haul it in? Yes, he did, inside the 10. First and goal, K-State. Colin Klein to Chris Harper. How about the confidence of Bill Snyder's finding in his young quarterback, and young as a starter, to throw it on first down in overtime, and Klein buying time, buying time. And Harper comes back on the comeback, gets that left foot inbounds, and puts the Wildcats in the prime position to see Colin Klein two, three, four times. Try to score his fourth rushing touchdown on the ground. Here's Klein, dropped on first and goal as soon as he touches it. Demontre Moore, the sophomore joker linebacker, as they call him, for AM. Second and goal. Final meeting in the Big 12 Conference between Texas AM, who's off to the SEC, and Kansas State. Aggies will get the football next, regardless of what happens here for Kansas State. Junior from Colorado, keeper on second and goal, picking his way into the end zone, touchdown! Fourth rushing touchdown of the day for Colin Klein. They get the ball to the eight-yard line. That's Colin Klein territory. Six foot five, 225 pounds. Boy, that sure looks like that actually comes down before he crosses the goal line. And Brock, that's exactly what happens. Tremaine Thompson recovers that fumble. We were wondering why there wasn't a signal from the officials on the Klein touchdown. That is why a fumble by Klein recovered by Tremaine Thompson. And that is the Kansas State touchdown. So Klein fumbles at the goal line into the end zone. Tremaine Thompson recovers, and K-State takes the lead in OT. And a brilliant hit there by Demontre Moore. Back-to-back -back plays. He does exactly what he's supposed to do as a defender. Get your hat on the football. And I mentioned the little things, the details. Tremaine Thompson on the spot, aware. Focused, follows his quarterback into the end zone. Can't say enough about Colin Klein and the attention to detail of Bill Snyder's football teams year in and year out. So now Texas A&M needs a touchdown. This is why the Aggies, who won the toss, elected to take the football second. Like the bottom of a baseball inning, this is the bottom of the first OT. Ryan Tannehill under center, flags. Start. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, first down. 
nine penalties for 82 yards against Texas A&M. Only one penalty on the day for Kansas State. Can have it when you're on the road in a hostile environment like this. Those penalties kill you. Ryan Tannehill's pass is caught on first down. Lamoth met as soon as he gets the football by David Garrett. Second down and ten for the Aggies. Tannehill throwing on second down. Complete. Ryan Swope gets to the 20. So this is third down and five for Texas A&M. Aggies need a touchdown on this possession. Tannehill to throw on third and five. Complete. Swope near the 10. Moving the sticks. It will be first down and 10 for Texas A&M from just outside the 10. A tremendous poise there by Tannehill. Game on the line. Is there any surprise you're going to go to your most trusted outlet? You haven't called Ryan Swope's name a lot today, but that was a critical conversion. Cyrus Gray straight ahead on first and ten. Gets to maybe the nine. Another overtime classic between Texas A&M and Kansas State. Double overtime for the Big 12 title in 1998. With the Aggies off to the SEC. The final meeting is Big 12 conference members between the Wildcats and Aggies. This is the bottom of the first overtime. Texas A&M needs a touchdown. Senior quarterback from Big Spring, Texas. Audibles. Tannehill pumps. Incomplete on the outside, making it third down and eight. That was intended for Fuller, the red zone target most often for the Aggies. After giving up a thousand yards, passing the last two games, the back end of this Kansas State defense has been very sticky. Nigel Malone. Out there in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Jeff Four, they try to run the slant corner. He runs the route for Fuller, forces yet another third down. Tannehill to the end zone, caught, touchdown. Fuller makes the grab. A PAT from the Aggies will send us to a second overtime between Kansas State and Texas A&M. You saw the slant corner earlier. They call that the Dino route. With all West Coast systems feature, slant corner, back to the post, big target, excellent execution. Randy Bullock's PAT evens us at 38. Just like it was in the 1998 Big 12 title game, a second overtime for the Aggies and Wildcats. Either way, it's going to be a memorable final trip to Manhattan, Kansas for the Aggies of Texas A&M, who are off to the SEC, heading to a second overtime here in the first OT game at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, and there is Bill Snyder. Another coin toss coming to again determine who gets We flip sides now. So AM will get the football first. Kansas State will have the advantage here in the second overtime. If we go to a third overtime, we'll have a point toss. This is one just transpired in the first OT. Come back to get the 
inside the 10. Wayne Thompson aware of the fumble in the end zone. Tannehill, ice water in his veins, poised on those third down passes to send this into the second frame. And as I said earlier, before that last drive, these are the opportunities that you live for if you're a quarterback. And you're a senior quarterback in a really big game on the road for your program, a game you must have. In many ways, it's looked like your losses earlier this season where you unable to finish, unable to hold on to those double-digit leads. This is where, as a redshirt senior, you've got to say within that huddle, guys, not this time. You may have lost three of them this year with double-digit leads. Not this time. So Kansas State will take the full position, if you will, if you're going back to that baseball analogy, the bottom of the second overtime. They play defense first, meaning when they get the football, they will know exactly what they need to score. Potentially extend this game to a third overtime where you would have to go for two on any touchdowns. Ryan Tannehill in the Aggie offense in the second overtime from the 25. Tannehill pumps, throws, incomplete. Let's check in with Robert Flores. For the Houston Cougars as well. Here in Manhattan, Kansas, Carter Blackburn with Brock Heward. This is the beginning of the second overtime. Second and 10 for the Aggies. Tannehill from the shotgun. Setting up the screen, incomplete, intended for Gray. Third and 10. You hear people talk about a sound defense. Well, what that means is guys stay within position. And Kansas State has done that on the last two plays. The first play down the field, that time Arthur Brown and company, they feel the screen pass called. They're not influenced by the action. And they set up a pivotal, the most pivotal third down yet. An extra long situation for Tannehill. Complete. Fourth down coming. It's going to be the red shirt freshman Ryan Mueller. They come in nickel situations. They put him inside. He has the awareness. He's not getting home. He's not getting anywhere. So try to sense and get your hands up. And force the field goal. 42 yard field goal attempt coming from Randy Bullock. Wind does not appear to be a factor. The 42-yarder is easily good. Heck of a kick there from Randy Bullock to put Texas A&M up by three, meaning K-State gets the football knowing that a touchdown wins this game. Texas A&M, who was ranked number eight before the season began, trying to get to their sixth win and become bowl eligible and remain above 500 in the Big 12. This is an Aggie team who's three and three in the Big 12 right now. Kansas State trying to go to eight and two would be the first time they've won eight games in a season since the Big 12 title in 2003. When they upset Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma State, big winner earlier. Kansas State right now in third place. Cotton Bowl implications potentially in this second overtime. The call and climb of the Wildcats. If they get in the end zone, ball game, Kansas State wins, goes to 8 2. Klein, a career day through the air, 281 yards, has the three rushing touchdowns. Mike Sherman chomping on that, on that gum. And when you can provide that kind of balance, when you can throw it effectively and win in one on one coverage, you can move the chains and score touchdowns with your legs. You become so difficult to stop. Handing off on second down. This is Hubert on the stretch play to get to the 22. So we've got third down and about seven coming here for Kansas State against Tim DeRuder's defense. What does Tim DeRuder do here? Does he risk the pressure situation and leave his guys one-on-one -on -one where we've already seen a number of pass interference penalties where we've seen those corners lose a little focus down the field? Will Lionel Smith and company keep everything in front of them and try to force 
a game tying field goal. Field goal would tie if the Wildcats are unable to convert on third down. Caught on third and six, pressure, throws incomplete, no flags. Field goal attempt coming for Kansas State. That would tie this game and send it to a third overtime. And give DeMontre Moore credit once again. We saw him in the last overtime period with a couple fantastic plays, forcing the fumble that time. He runs right through the left tackle, forces the early throw. DeMontre Moore has come alive in this overtime. Cantelli's tied in once with a 44-yarder. This is from 38 for Anthony Cantelli to send us to a third overtime. Cantelli's 38-yarder is good. The third overtime between the Aggies and Wildcats coming up next. The day isn't done in Manhattan. Who would have thought you could better the 1998 game between Texas A&M and Kansas State that went to double overtime of the Big 12 title? Well, Big 12 title's not on the line, but we're headed to a third overtime, and the critical aspect of this third overtime must go for a two-point conversion after a touchdown beginning in this period. And we saw just a couple weeks ago and Stanford and USC went into that triple overtime. Those two-point conversions become so critical. You gotta like your chances with the big quarterback if they can score a touchdown, his opportunity, use that big frame. Top of the third overtime for Colin Klein and Kansas State. Heavy pressure coming. He will take it all the way into the end zone for a Kansas State touchdown. Fourth rushing touchdown of the day for Colin Klein. K-State leads in the third overtime. How many times this afternoon has Colin Klein extended the passing plays? They made Texas A&M pay down the field on some post routes and some comebacks. And this time, you could see with his eyes, all the defenders lose their sense and their job and their containment. And he may not be lightning fast on a track, but he's football fast. And now 23 rushing touchdowns on the year. Two-point conversion coming. There's your offensive coordinators, Dana Dimmel and Del Miller, on the right side of that box for Kansas State. And this is a shared responsibility based on field position, based on time in the game, based on run or pass. Those two as coordinators share the responsibilities. Lots of conversation. The ball has got to be in number seven's hands. With the game on the line, this offense anyway goes and focuses through Colin Klein. To me, now is not the time to get cute. All 22 defenders here, and in particular, watch those defenders as Colin Klein is looking and gives some credit to that offensive line that allows him to extend the play. Everybody fast flows with his eyes. He does the damage on the backside. First overtime game at Bill Snyder Family Stadium in the third overtime. This is the top of the third overtime. Aggies will get the football no matter what. Needing a touchdown, question is two-point conversion or not? Remember what the Stanford coaches said about their two-point conversion. You work years. This is the first one at home, an overtime period. You spend so much time. You have planned, you have prepared, you have repped, you have worked on this place, play all season long for this moment. Colin Klein from the shotgun. Klein tosses incomplete. Kansas State appears to go for a little bit of a trick play on the two-point conversion. Let's check in with Robert. Of will lead in for you, a triple overtime game. Kansas State and Texas A&M, Carter Blackburn, Brock Heward, our ESPN on ABC crew. I think it was just a bungled snap operation. I don't know if the center knew that he was in the shotgun. You see that, and in those moments, that's the last thing you think that can happen. Need a touchdown, they will be forced to go for two here in this third overtime. And then Ryan Tannehill from the shotgun gives to Cyrus Gray straight ahead inside the 20. 
Cyrus Gray, who's gone over 3,000 career rushing yards in this game, over 200 rushing yards on the day, carrying the load without Kristen Michael, out for the season with a torn ACL. Short of a first down, third down coming for the Aggies. Arthur Brown makes the stop. He does not miss tackles, Arthur Brown. When he has a chance to zero in on you, he's bringing you to the ground. And there you see a little of the difference between Tannehill and Klein. The inability to break that one critical tackle. But you have put yourself now in a very, very good third down situation with just third and one opportunity. Need a touchdown, so it is certainly two plays here. Or first and goal. And there is Nehemiah Hicks, who has had three critical drops in this game for Texas A&M, who hauls that one in here in the third overtime to set up first and goal. Aggies need to get in the end zone. A Texas A&M team, preseason number eight. High hopes for the Aggies. Time and time again, letting leads slip away in the second half, as they did in the fourth quarter against Kansas State. But in what we said was a crossroads game for both Texas A&M and Kansas State, Aggies have a chance to begin a finish to their season, as they did a year ago. Prior to the snap, timeout, A&M. It's their overtime timeout, 30 seconds. So before the flag is thrown, Mike Sherman gets his timeout. It's a miscommunication there as far as personnel running on the field late or the whole operation was just bungled. So instead of risking a play there where you don't have everybody within the continuity and the timing of it, Mike Sherman realizes, no, 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 I'm going to burn my timeout here. So now it's first and goal. Mike Sherman also the play caller offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. What do you expect we'll see now it's first and goal for the Aggies. Well, the last time down here, you saw the whole playbook. You saw slant, you saw slant corner, you saw slant corner post to Fuller. You've got a lot of options. You've seen some draw from Tannehill. You've got everything available to you here, first and goal. And most importantly, you should also be thinking about that two-point play you hope is coming to win it here in the Again, third overtime, forced to go for two if the Aggies can get into the end zone. Gray on first and goal. It's a couple. The two he makes the stop. In 1998, Big 12 title game, a pair of overtimes. We're in the third overtime, and this final meeting is Big 12 members between Texas A&M and Kansas State. Second down and goal for the senior QB Ryan Tannehill. Reverse. Tannehill throws incomplete, intended for Cyrus Gray. Third and goal. Adam Davis puts the pressure on Tannehill. We saw Davis earlier this afternoon on a fourth and one situation blow the play up. That time he does not lose his contain as the AM defenders did when Klein runs free for a touchdown. This is your opportunity if you're Ryan Tannehill as a red shirt senior to deliver. Need a touchdown. So it is without question for down territory. Tannehill throws incomplete. It will be fourth down and goal. Fourth down and the ball game. If Kansas State stops Texas A&M on this play, the Wildcats win in triple overtime. Just get a sense of this place right now. It is electric. Fourth and goal, Aggies need to put it in the end zone on this play. Tannehill pressure. Tannehill heaves it to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. 
Wachaku makes the grab. A&M will be forced to go for two. And now with Texas A&M gets this two-point conversion, they claim the victory in triple overtime. Wachaku finishes it on the other end, but this is all Ryan Tannehill. Kansas State does not buy the play action. Tannehill avoids the sack, does not fluster, gives his receiver an opportunity to make a play and an opportunity to put so many of those demons away from this season. So many failures and so many big opportunities. Your chance to win the game right here. Even at 47 in the third overtime. That Aggie two-point conversion gets Texas a and the win. Tannehill's pass is tipped and incomplete. We are headed to a fourth overtime between Texas A&M and Kansas State. What a way to close out this Big 12 series between Texas A&M and Kansas State. To the fourth overtime in Manhattan. That's right. We're headed to a fourth overtime at Bill Snyder Family Stadium here in Manhattan, Kansas. Carter Blackbird with Brock Heward, our entire ESPN on ABC crew. Getting you set for the big one between Stanford and Oregon with a great one here in the Big 12. And if those standings hold and Oklahoma State goes on to play for a national title, Oklahoma goes to the Fiesta Bowl, this game could determine who gets to play in the Cotton Bowl. So that third place spot, a big one in the Big 12. So Willie and the Wildcats ready for overtime number four. Aggies will get the football first in this group overtime. Play to Ryan Tannehill, roll it, throw it, drops. And we have seen some key drops from Texas A&M today. That one from Prelo. And you wonder now, as you enter the fourth frame, take a look at fatigue. We all remember watching that USC-Stanford game. Hands on hips, guys tired offensively. That means the inability to finish. And for Fuller, you had a chance to end it in triple overtime if you catch the slam there. A drop pass, those are the little things that as you get fatigued, often you can't find a way to finish. Cyrus Gray takes it on second down. Gets to near the 20. He doesn't look tired. I, I would agree with everything Mike Sherman said to us in our production call, that Cyrus Gray is a guy that gets better as the game evolves. Well, even into the fourth overtime, he's still running hard. 30 carries on the day now for Cyrus Gray. Third and five, Tannehill to the air, it's caught. Just outside the 10, it'll be first and 10 for the Aggies. Jeff Fuller, the senior from McKinney, Texas, makes the grab. Mike Sherman said that his quarterback was poised, that nothing ever seemed to bother and fluster him. I would agree. In a situation where it would be easy with drop passes and missed opportunities and lots of guys not doing their job around him, and Tannehill remains unfazed. Play fake. Tannehill finds Swope inside the 10. Ryan Swope, the junior from Austin Westlake High School. See some of the hands on the hips. It's just, these guys are just exerting maximum effort on every single snap. Just what's turned out to be an epic ball game here in Manhattan. This is second down and six for the Aggies. Tannehill goes up to center with Cyrus Gray behind him. Cyrus Gray straight ahead to the six. Maybe got a yard. So third down and about five coming. That's Adam Davis, 97 for Kansas State with another good push. Colin Klein of the Kansas State offense will get the football in the bottom half of this fourth overtime. So no matter what happens for Texas A&M here, Kansas State will get the football. You have to go for two if you put it in the end zone here in this fourth overtime. But first, you have to get the end zone. And you can still gain that ever important first down here. Don't need just a touchdown. Tannehill right near 
the first down marker. The ball is caught. This is a big spot coming up. Ryan Swope is marked about a yard short, meaning fourth down and one. And decision time. Are you going to go for it on fourth and one, or are you going to take the sure points? I think you have to take the points in this situation if you're Mike Sherman, and that's what he does. He did it earlier to go up 10 in the fourth quarter. Well, he's actually going to think about it. He's, I think, well, he's thinking about whether or not to take a timeout. He decides to roll with the field goal. Randy Bullock, two for three today. That miss was 50 in the win. This 20-yarder is good. So Texas A&M leads 50 to 47. But now Kansas State gets the football in the bottom of the fourth overtime. If the Wildcats get in the end zone, they win. And if Kansas State is going to get in the end zone, it's likely going to be Colin Klein who gets them there. Four rushing touchdowns on the day. Career high over 280 yards passing as well. He's as tough as they come. You can talk about some of the fundamentals that need to grow and improve and some of the passing that isn't picture perfect. I've seen most opportunities today when he's had a shot down the field, he's delivered. He sets the tone for this offense. Overtime came into play in 1996. This is the longest game for both of these schools since overtime. First overtime for Kansas State at home. I addressed that call by Mike Sherman to not go for it. And many times, and you remember sitting up here in this booth last year with Mike Bellotti. And from a coaching perspective, many times coaches will tell you, in fact, Mike Riley a year ago when we go to overtime will tell you when you're on the road, you got to force the issue. When you're on the road, you go for it on fourth down in those situations. I really don't mind that call for Mike Sherman. You've seen some good out of your defense. You've seen three takeaways. You've seen a stop in an overtime period and held, holding the opponent to a field goal. So I don't mind that conservative play for Mike Sherman. Gives the Aggies the lead right now, 50 to 47. Running on second down, following his running back block oh, to, to make it third down and about three for the Wildcats. And again, this is the bottom of the fourth overtime. So Colin Klein and Kansas State and Bill Snyder know Get in the end zone, win the ball game in four overtimes. Turn the football over. Game over. Fine keeper again on third down and three. Stretching near the first down marker. Very close. And it is first down Kansas State. Like so many times for Colin Klein and K-State, just enough to move the chains. When you see Wilson and Hubert lined up to that left side or the right side, more often than not, all game long, Kansas State said, fine, you know where it's going. You can't stop us. But first... Of a first down is under further review. Take a look at that spot, which is huge. Wilson does his job. You see Klein avoid that first contact. Why he's had so much success scoring touchdowns and being effective. Hunter has a shot in the backfield. You can see number one, the safety fly through there. Klein nimble enough to avoid that contact. And once you start getting into that pile and that massive humanity, don't know if there's going to be enough. Remember the call on the field. It's so important in these situations. That spot and that call on the field is a first down. So they would need indisputable video evidence. As the rule book says, be convinced beyond any doubt. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. So not enough evidence to overturn it. First down and 10, Kansas State from the 15. Keep an eye on that play. Remember that play with the two backs in there. One concept Kansas State likes to run off of that is to fake it. Like Klein's going to come up right behind those guys, and then he'll come back. He'll pull that out and hit a Harper down the field on a slant or a post. They've got that in their back pocket. When you see a safety react the way that Hunter reacted there, nearly getting Klein in the backfield. A week ago, Kansas State right down to the wire with Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Back home in Manhattan against the Aggies. Overtime number four. Klein 
Throws to the end zone for Thompson. It is incomplete. Flags down. Pass interference. Would appear to be the call against Tony Hurd Jr., making it first and goal. Pass interference. Defense number two. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. You see the action, the two backs. You knew that was coming when the reaction from the defense was what it was on that third down play. You create a one on one. And for the third time, an enormous pass interference against you for the Aggies. Kansas State takes a timeout. The Wildcats are two yards away from a win in the fourth overtime. Here's what you know. You're going to get. You're going to get number seven at least four times. And if you do anything else and you try to get in the shotgun and you try to be cute, I'm giving that ball to number seven four times. 23 occasions this year rushing touchdowns. He's on pace to shatter the all time record for rushing touchdowns in a season. Number seven at six foot five, bloodied, in pain, hurting. This is his game. This is his game to finish. Already 33 carries on the day for Colin Klein. Two yards away from a victory. Four rushing touchdowns on the day for Klein. Colin Klein on first and goal. Still shoving, still shoving. No signal, Klein is marked just short of the goal line. Second and goal. Inches away from a Kansas State win. Look at the scrum, look at the surge, look at the effort, look at the want to of those Kansas State Wildcats. They can smell it, they can sense it. Their quarterback, this is what he lives for, these opportunities around the goal line. Second down and goal. Klein. Is it a touchdown, Kansas State, in four overtime. The Kansas State Wildcats win. And the final Big 12 meeting between K-State and Texas A&M. for Colin Klein, his fifth rushing touchdown, four overtimes, Kansas State beats Texas a &S. Sometimes football can be very complex, at other times it can be very simple. You play to your strength, and your strength is Colin Klein. Kansas State wins it over Texas a and in four overtimes in Manhattan. From Rock Hill, the entire hard-working crew on Carter Blackman. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. A Big 12 Classic in Manhattan. K-State wins it in four overtimes. And coming up very shortly, Oregon versus Stanford on ABC.